Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the daily chart of silver provided by netdania.com. Now we're at about 16.23 and you can see we're steeply dropping in volume here. So it looks like the volume spike is in barring some massive breakdown or blast off. So I wanted to compare and contrast to the 2009 or 2008 bottom that we made you can see the rounding off process that it took it was a good well if we go to the monthly that gives us a, a view of the months you can see it was a good one two three four basically a total of five months to complete the bottom now we were somewhere into I guess you could say we're in the third month here and of course the volume is absolutely insane we don't really have volume figures from back then but I would venture to guess that they were just a fraction of the volume that we have now so really we don't have any firm resolution to the upside we just have that volume spike in and back in 2009 it took it a while to get moving then finally once it had come off that rounding bottom area that's when it really started to move that's when you got the rally up here and a fall back and then a rally and finally a test and then uh, and then the blast off so are we going to see the same sort of thing this time it's starting to shape up that way but again no one knows the future so i wanted to go and look at my favorite series of them all and that's the lunar series now let's start off and look at the mintage because this is going to be as it turns out the most important thing now i've covered this before the one ounce coin always has that three thousand allotment three hundred thousand allotment until we get down to no we have three three hundred thousand allotment and and then then there's the declared mintage now i've been it's been confirmed to me by a number of sources that once Perth gives you a declared mintage, that's it. They're done. So the pattern that we're going to see here that's really going to stand out is the difference between the one ounce and the half ounce. And those, those are the ones that I've done. So we're going to go and look at the prices and then we're going to come back and look at this volume. I've put the volume in these uh, Excel or, sp or these uh, open office spreadsheets so you can compare. So we'll start out with the one ounce lunar. Now the series started in 2008. There was a lunar series one and this is lunar series two. So we started out with the mouse and then the ox and then the tiger and then the rabbit and then the dragon and then the snake. And 2014 is the year of the horse. So there's a couple of things that stand out here one is that well the store price is pretty much consistently higher than any eBay price that things are going for the other thing that is a big contrast to the half ounce series is that prices are pretty consistent across the board they fall off a little bit but generally they're just strong you can see 56, 52, 52, 48, 43, 33. So the, the one ounce snake seems to be the weakest there and then a, a rebound with the uh, one ounce horse. Now that's going to be a pattern that emerges. If you remember, this is just anecdotally, but if you remember when the 2012 Dragon came out, those were very expensive. I think I first saw those... Uh, on sale at Am Apmex for a hundred dollars they were like ninety nine dollars and and they slowly drifted down over the course of time uh, but I think the lowest they ever got was around forty to forty five dollars so that's going to end up having an impact on the number of half ounce because the half ounce are minted to demand whereas there's an, a fixed allotment for the one ounce so it's an interesting dynamic we're gonna see we're gonna explore it more when we get to the half ounce but the other thing we want to notice here is that the snake was the one 
now I'm just going by memory here, the snake is the one that they sold for quite a bit less. They didn't, you know, bring it out of the gate a lot of money. Now the, the 2014, if I recall, I didn't see that coin for less than $45 from the time that it was available to pretty much until now. So some of these one ounce coins starting in 2012, they, and I don't know who was responsible for it. I don't, I doubt that the Perth Mint was responsible for it, but I may be wrong. I think that it was the people that order them like Atmex and Provident, they just decided to put a big premium on those coins to start with. So otherwise the one ounce is fairly consistent and there's not a lot that stands out here. It, the big shocker is when we get to the half ounce. Now I could not compile accurate statistics because they just weren't available. First of all, for the half ounce in 2008 and 2009, they're not available anywhere to buy. There's no store you can buy them at. I, I may be wrong. There might be some that I missed, but I could not find any on sale online right now at all. So they're just not available. Now you'll notice the mintage of those two is all the way down here at 17,000. So you can see a pattern here if you remember the one ounce has that consistent 300,000 across the board. And you can see we, we have a very low 17 and 17 and then we have 50,000 for the tiger. We got up to 124,000 for the rabbit and then we had this massive boom to 389,000 on the half ounce in, in the dragon. And that's the one I actually have the most of. So it appears that everybody got the same idea at the same time. Now remember, the one ounce was being offered for $99, whereas we picked up our 2012 half ounce dragons for as little as $12 a coin. So that makes sense that a lot of people are just going to refuse to pay that much money for the one ounce when they can go and pick up the half ounce. And I remember we also picked up our two ounce coins for, uh, I think it was, maybe it was 50 or $60. So both, of, both the half ounce and the two ounce coins were a much better deal for the amount of silver that you could get. Now, will it be a better deal in the long run as far as numismatics go? That remains to be seen. Now, the other thing that we see here is the mintage drop off with the year of the snake in 2013. Now, if you remember, I pointed out the one ounce did not come out with that massive premium. The, the year of the snake, for whatever reason, they decided that, well, we're just going to sell that at a reasonable markup over spot. So what that did was that decreased the demand for these half ounce coins. Now, this figure for 2014 is not complete, so I don't know what this figure is going to be. But my guess is this, this figure will probably not be much more over 200,000. I don't think that it's going to surpass the 2012 half ounce mintages. So if that's the case, it might be very profitable to continue to pick up the half ounce we got a lot of the half ounce 2014s for around 12 or 13 dollars when silver was making a low but then after pretty much the members snapped up the ones that were available on atmex and some of the other places they've now kind of moved up into this 17 range and you can see that the 17 range is close to what they're selling for on ebay so now looking at the ebay prices i could only find one of the the mouse and it sold for $130. Now another thing that's really important because I've been keeping my eye I've been keeping a watch really close on the colorized coins. Now I've never purchased a colorized coin, but I've been trying to figure out if if a coin is colorized, it should be at least worth as much as the non-colorized coin of the same denomination. Well, 
just to show just to say anecdotally that did not pan out and and one that definitely proved that to me or two actually that proved that to me were the the mouse and the ox because I could only found, find one half ounce mouse it was $130 but I found many colorized half ounce mice for as low as 20 and 30 dollars each now I also found only two of the oxes for sixty dollars uh, but I found colorized ones for a lot cheaper than that it's surprising to me that I could only find three of the half ounce tigers and they're actually selling now at a store price of eighty dollars for the half ounce tiger now that's really shocking because you can buy the one ounce tiger the let's see the store price for the one ounce tiger is 75 so we actually have a more expensive half ounce tiger than one ounce tiger but the mintage on that was 50,000 whereas the mintage on the one ounce was 300,000 so the mintage definitely seems to be what is driving this price now 17,000 if you think about the fact that there's a billion Chinese and that this series based on the Chinese lunar calendar is aimed at the Chinese and that's one of the reasons why I saw such appeal in this that the coin is so well made it's Perth Mint Silver they come in individual sealed capsules they appeal to China and of course they're silver uh, it's just this these coins have everything going for them but the fact that there's only 17,000 of these coins in the world and there's a billion Chinese uh, how many Chinese might just want to have one of each of the coins you can see there aren't going to be coins available and that's that's kind of the pattern that we see here with just one and then two and then three these store prices not available so maybe that pattern will work its way out forward as silver collectors collect more but I know there's a lot of people like me right now that are having a lot of regrets that they didn't go and pick up a bunch of half ounce lunar coins back in 2008 2009 2010 2010 is the year that I started buying them but I concentrated very heavily on the one ounce coin I don't have a lot of the half ounce coins but uh, that's really an incredible price of eighty dollars but they're still averaging about forty two dollars now there were also um, a lot of kind of neat arbitrage plays it's not really arbitrage because you can't uh, there's just not enough information and not enough players but you can kind of get a gut feeling for it when you're going through eBay you can sometimes see a roll of one of these um, and sometimes the roll price uh, if it's a roll of 20 it's actually a much lower price and occasionally you'll see um, you'll see a free kind of low price uh, $15 that's not that low for the dragon but you can see that it sold for as high as 30 so occasionally here's the, th the horse that came in at 13 and sometimes you can get rolls so that's another potential play is just looking around on eBay for a mispricing because when a market is this thin then that's an opportunity for mispricings to occur so I'm very pleased with the the lunar series now the big question is going to be what's going to happen going forward now I'd, I'd love somebody who is in Australia and familiar with the Perth Mint if maybe they can explain to me why beginning in 2012 we had the one ounce dragons uh, so overpriced if that price actually originated with the mint itself or if that was something that the secondary players decided to do because that decision and I can understand why they made that decision because 2012 being the year of the dragon dragon is a very important symbol for the Chinese so it would make sense that uh, they would try to get a big premium off of that coin maybe the allotment sold out really fast I don't really know how that works either so if there's someone who is more familiar with Perth and how the allotments are filled 
initially on a coin if they're can all be filled up on a pre-order basis or how the permit manages that that would be some valuable information so th this is going to be the next to the last in the series on the numismatics i'm going to cover the on the next episode i'm going to cover some of the exceptional ones and some of the privy coins because there's these privy coins floating around and the canadian mint now has uh, started to do privy coins as well. So we're going to go ahead and cover that as we wrap up this series. Now, one of the big benefits, I think, going forward is going to be um, what this numismatic premium does for the classification of this coin. Now, you can clearly see that with being $130 and not available in any stores, basically not available at all this first year of the lunar series especially of this half ounce coin with only 17,000 being out there this is no longer an issue of silver really it's become a numismatic issue you're talking about $260 an ounce silver at this point now if there's some type of confiscation which I don't think there's going to be but if there were some type of confiscation or laws about bullion, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a law that, that provides for confiscation. It might just be a law that provides for taxation of bullion. The question is, will this coin be an exception? I think it will, because that is so far out of the range with silver trading at about $16 an ounce, and this coin selling at $260 an ounce, we're not talking about silver anymore. So this is why I believe that this is the best strategy to pursue. Now, I've, I've covered the other reasons of why this is the best strategy to pursue. And the, the strong hands argument is the other big argument because when you see the short-term and mid-term and especially now long-term performance of these coins you're not going to be shaken out of any kind of drawdowns um, like i said i piled into the tiger series i wish i would have piled into the half ounce instead of the one ounce but nevertheless i piled into that series there wasn't a time since then um, that even with the spike in 2011 and then the drop all the way back down to where we are right now there was not one moment in time when I was even tempted to sell those coins now there are a lot of people who do a kind of flipping of coins and certainly if you had maybe rolls and rolls and rolls of these uh, $130 half ounce coins you might be tempted to roll into something maybe you wanted to just st stack straight silver and just increase your stack by that much or maybe you wanted to roll out of those and maybe roll into the half ounce horses thinking that they're going to do the same thing i don't know but there are opportunities out there when you're buying this sort of coin that has this type of explosive numismatic premium so this was a big shocker for me I did not think the figures were going to turn out this way on the half ounce coin. Uh, the other thing that I, I had been doing was that I was basing my buying upon the what I considered the numismatic appeal of the coin. That's going to be the, the type of animal that's on it and the appeal of the artwork. And that's why I, I got a lot of the 2010 Tigers, didn't get hardly any of the 2011 Rabbits. Well, that seems to be that sentiment seems to be wrong. It appears that these prices are driven primarily and almost exclusively by the mintage figures. Uh, the rarer the coin, the higher the premium. That's really the only way you can account for the fact that the half ounce tiger is selling for more than the one ounce tiger. So that's some crazy stuff. So we want to keep an eye on this 2014 horse. That's really the only thing that's going to be available at any type of reasonable price. We can get the half ounce for $17 or the colorized for $17. I'm not convinced that the colorized are going to perform. I just don't think 
that silver stackers like colored coins. I, that's just the way I think it's going to shake out. So back to the silver chart. We're still waiting for a resolution of this gigantic volume bottom. Um, nobody knows where it's going to go, but I think the move ultimately is going to be explosive. And we'll talk to you next time.